Welcome to Worship with St. Albans. Our opening hymn today is O Day Full of Grace, although it looks a little gloomy, but um, Rick is going to screen share, so please sing along. Could you start over? And it's, we're not seeing your screen. You can't see the screen? No, and, and you were muted besides. It should work even though I'm muted, but it's so there's probably some problem with the uh, sharing the computer sound. Let me let me start over again. Okay, I'm sharing computer sound. Can everyone see that? Yes.
I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seeds of humans and the seed of animals. And just as I have watched over them to pluck up and break down, to overthrow, destroy and bring evil, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days, they shall no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are on edge. But all shall die for their own sins. The teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, <clears throat> says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to, one, to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's Psalm is Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall never slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. So the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Our second reading is from Timothy. As for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from 
whom you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The word of God is living and active able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Hallelujah. The Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As Jesus told his disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart, he said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused. But later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning. The parable of the unjust ju judge and the persistent widow is very straightforward. It even starts with a topic sentence. Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. But it raises a big question. If God grants justice to those who persist in prayer, why is there still so much injustice in the world? Surely, many of the millions of victims of oppression and persecution have been praying for justice every single day. Many of us who aren't victims ourselves, but know about the horrors that exist out there, pray for it too. And yet the horrors continue. I've seen at least three possible explanations. <laughs> the first one is that people just simply are not persistent enough. Another is that prayer may not lead to external changes so much as it leads to a relationship with God that helps a person to endure what happens to them. I've heard stories of enslaved people and Holocaust victims who were able to find some sort of inner peace. And then there's the God's timeline isn't like our timeline argument. At first glance, I have problems with all of these. First always sounds to me like blaming the victims. And, and I think it's used sometimes that way. You know, if you 
if your prayers aren't being answered, you just must not be praying hard enough. The second is just very hard for me to comprehend. And the third one kind of makes me think, well, so why bother? But the more I think about it and apply it to myself, I, I began to see the truth in all these, in all these arguments or statements. Um, I've been trying to be more persistent in my prayers for a better world. And it turns out that at least for me, this is very difficult. It seems both presumptuous and futile at the same time. What could I possibly say to God that God hasn't already heard innumerable times? But then here's Jesus right in this parable telling me that this is the right thing to do. And yet still, I find that I get distracted and, you know, I, it's just hard. And um, I'm not sure exactly the words to use. And it's really easy to get discouraged. And if that's true for me, how much more true it must be for people who are actually victims of things like torture and enslavement. But I wonder if I can find some way to do this and to respond to the daily you know, onslaught of horrors in the news with prayer instead of despair, if I might begin to see things differently. Maybe I'd start to see more ways that I could be part of the solution. Maybe some of that elusive inner peace would start to creep in. And I might even see a bigger picture where things are moving in the right direction, even if I won't live to see the, the final results. As usual, I don't know the answers, but this is what I think. We have absolutely nothing to lose by praying every day for the kind of world that we want. It doesn't, it can be done anytime, anywhere. It won't prevent us from doing anything, from taking action. It might even help us to do more. So all I can say is with God's help, let's give it a try. Thank you. Uh, I guess I'm still on. <laughs> uh, Peter and I have been members of this church since 2001. And I can't begin to list all the names, this, all the ways that this community has enriched our lives. We've seen a lot of changes over the years. It's not exactly, St. Albans is not exactly the same place it was in 2001 or in 2010. But you know that saying that so often is repeated without the critical last word, the more the thing changes, the more it stays the same thing. And there's some, there's some fundamental spirit at St. Albans that that's, hasn't changed. Despite all of the losses that we've experienced without the changes, through the, the changes in personnel and the financial ups and downs. It's a spirit of love and resilience. And nothing illustrates it better for me than the way we've adapted to the pandemic and you know, not having a, a rector for these last almost three years. I think it's time for St. Albans to change again. And having been there here all these years, I feel a lot of hope that we will rise to the challenges we face right now. Getting back to full-time in-person services, finding a new part-time rector, growing our congregation. We'll, we will all be called to contribute, and I believe we'll all find the means within ourselves to do it. I feel that because I've seen us do it before. Thank you, Margaret. In this time when we are unable to gather in one place for worship, we continue to offer our time and our treasure to support St. Albans and all the ministries of the church. Let us pray together. God of all creation, 
all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. All the baptized, that they become skilled in compassion and grace and equipped to share the good news with all. Grant your followers persistence in proclamation and prayer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For air and sky, clouds and sun, that they provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground. Renew and restore our polluted atmosphere and empower us to be worthy stores of creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, and have the courage to do what is right. Eliminate oppression and injustice on our criminal justice system. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For those in our congregation and community engaged in advocacy work, that with the persistence of the widow, they lift their voices in seeking justice on behalf of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For all who are lonely, especially those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar city or country, political prisoners without recourse to justice, hospital patients without visitors, and any who are ill or grief-stricken. Please unmute and offer your own petitions. For Steve and Susan and for Katie and Bob. Amen. Amen. For Karen and Victor. Amen. 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 For Janet's family. Amen. 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 For Melody um, today, um, it's the her husband's one year anniversary of dying, and um, there's going to be a special earthside ceremony. Amen. 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 Hear us, O oh God. For your mercy. <laughs> For those who have taught us faith and now rest in your heavenly peace, that we remember and give thanks for these saints who shared the gospel in, through word and deed. Please unmute me, those you wish to remember. For Janet. Amen. Amen. For Ron. Amen. Amen. For Patricia. Amen. 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 For Andrew Kolegi. Amen. 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 For our parents, um, our grandparents, our brothers and sisters that are no longer here, and for my brother Stephen. Amen. 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 Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy. Actually, this is Sandy. It's you. It's you, Sandy, not Lori. Ah, oh, sorry. Sorry. Just With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As Christ taught us, we now pray. Our creator in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Do we have any birthdays, anniversaries, or travelers this week? Susan. Um, we have one more prayer, John. Oh, sorry. <laughs> can, you unmute, can you unmute and say that prayer? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to find the fourth page of my... Okay, there you go. So just give me a second. <laughs> it disappeared on what I was reading before. <laughs> You want me to read it? I don't have it. Okay. I, I can read it too. Okay. Oh Lord God, tireless guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all this suffering world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. Amen. And now we can do the birthdays. Yes, yeah, Sandy, we can do birthdays now. Okay, so do we have any birthdays coming out or recent? No October birthdays? Hmm. That's odd. Well, there's some. Uh, there must be some coming up. There's some so. coming up. Um, so we just not this week, apparently. Um, let's see. Yeah, Robin Robbins is coming up next week. Uh, Deb Gestures and Bill Langston. But um, but we'll do those next week. We'll do those next week, or we can do them now. <laughs> okay. Well, let's do them next week. Okay. What about travelers? I'm heading to uh, Fort Lauderdale to do a wedding. Yes, John is going to, to Fort Lauderdale. And Susan? Nelson is coming back from his little adventure in Yuba City. Oh. On the Amtrak. Wow. <laughs> so, Anne, did you have your hand up? Anne Partington, did you have? Are you traveling, Anne? You're muted, so you have to unmute. No, I'm not traveling. Oh, I thought you, I thought you I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. I think my, my thumb went across my little screen there. <laughs> no. And I'm sorry, I do not have the traveler's prayer in front of me. Um, so, um, can some, Beth, Becky, could you read that for me? Yeah. And it's John and Nelson. Oh, God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go. Preserve those who travel, especially John and Nelson. Surround them with your loving care. Protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And any anniversaries? Tuesday is, the, is Tom and my 58th wedding anniversary. Oh my wow! Is that possible? Congratulations! <laughs> 64. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Becky, would you mind reading I that? Say, John and Barbara Metcalf. Okay. Father in heaven, we ask your blessing upon Barbara and jo uh, Tom. <laughs> as they celebrate the anniversary of their marriage may they so love honor and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience in wisdom and true godliness that their home may continue to be a haven of blessing and peace through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen amen and the closing hymn, in case you can't see that, Sandy, is I can't. <laughs> sent forth with God's blessing. <laughs> okay.
Before I give the dismissal, just a, a couple announcements for the good of the order. Um, Bible study will be uh, coming back. I believe we're doing Ephesians. Is that correct? Yes, so. Ephesians. All right, I think That'll be close. this Wednesday at 7. And um, Becky, you'll send the Zoom. I'll send the link. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, and I wrote to Pam about it also to put it. So in we have link. shifted from 6.30 to 7. Is that yes. right? Yes. We have shifted. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's better for some and not better for some. <laughs> but I think we have to bow to Barbara's yeah. request, Barbara. Uh, we have to do some balancing, right? Larry, Larry's yeah. Barbara. <laughs> right, Barbara. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hi, Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> she made us better. A, a good cause. <laughs> yeah. well, you are the host, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. So I guess you get to make the call. Yeah. <laughs> I believe next week is a there is a concert, isn't there, Christine? Indeed, there is. It will be a jazz concert with the Eric Jacobson Quartet. Uh, he is a trumpeter, and his work is inspired by Coltrane and Miles Davis and Woody Shaw, among others. Great, great. Um, just want to remind you, we put the baby registry in uh, for Haley Holt uh, in the newsletter. So if you'd like to contribute, it, it, it's pretty easy to do. It sends it, you know, uh, Amazon's all wired up. So it'll tell you who's already bought the item and then it'll <laughs> send it directly to their address. You don't even have to even look up their address. So it's 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 pretty easy. I, I, I did it. It's, it's great. Um, on some more unfortunate news, we have um, uh, Janet Kirkpatrick did pass away. Uh, I gave her last rites on uh, uh, Thursday and then yesterday morning was she actually did pass away. I'll be working with the family with more details to come. Uh, so just hold the family in your prayers. Uh, Becky, did you have something? I wanted to ask Haley, uh, if, we want to, if we want to send something that we've made for the baby, could you put your address in the <laughs> in the chat? <laughs> Absolutely, I'll do that right now. And it's a girl, and it seems Another. to be a very pink theme. Another girl. <laughs> All right, <laughs> great. Okay. Hand me downs. Okay. All right. A sister for Stella May. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right, and uh, with that, let us pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. 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 Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs> So people are staying for the vestry meeting, I understand, uh, but we ha do we have a little time to chat? <laughs> Thanks everyone for a very lovely service. Margaret, your, one, your remarks were wonderful. Yes, oh, no. I agree. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you very much. And I want to thank everybody for how lovely Patricia's uh, service and reception was yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry I couldn't be there. Oh, me too. I'm sorry I missed it. Was it recorded, Pam? No. Okay. Thank you, John, for for presiding, stepping up, and yeah. Well, and I and I definitely want to thank uh, Pastor Peggy, who like literally an hour before just totally <laughs> came in and helped me. So that's great. Yeah, we should write a. We should need to send her a thank you card. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> it's a great one for cards, so we should send her one. Yeah, very nice idea. So, uh, and, uh, and she did it with some discomfort, you know, she's having a lot of, um, yeah, it was hard for her to stand as long as she had to stand. And um, she said she'd be undergoing a, a spinal procedure operation on the 7th of November. Oh, oh I was wondering if she was having some health challenges. But um, she and, and John and Larry and everyone who was involved just made it a wonderful service. Yeah, absolutely. And Sue took a picture um, of when they were blessing the elements, and hopefully it will be in the newsletter. So Could be nice. those who weren't able to be there will see that. Yeah. Well, thanks, Susan. You're really terrific with the media end of things for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I kind of made a big mistake in not bringing my computer. I didn't know that John won, that there were people who wanted to zoom in. So I'm really sorry about not thinking about that. Yeah, this whole question of media, I, I sort of wondered if- <laughs> Let's table that. <laughs> we could, could have, um, uh, once the program for this memorial was there, if we could have sent it out the way we sent out the bulletin. Yeah. And the oh, reason I say sure that, that was is that we ran out of the beautiful program, which was beautiful. And I'm a great fan of not wasting paper and making too many. But we had people coming in who were new. And so I guess I slipped around and took Peter's <laughs> program and I don't know, Chuck's program, people I knew, I snatched their programs. <laughs> and yeah. gave them to other people, which worked pretty well. I was one short in the end. I, I, I underestimated. I actually did not, I, I, there were more people than I was expecting. <laughs> well, I think that's fine. But if yeah. the program was online, lots of people had their phones and they would have simply called it up. Mm -hmm. And that leads me to another question. Is there any reason we can't put back up the hymn numbers? That board, do we still have those boards? And now that we're going to be, pray God, going back into the sanctuary more. Because for the, the old timers, really, the only thing you've got to have are the hymn numbers. Right. <laughs> you know the rest of the routine so well. For sure. Um, so we may, John, be moving. We could easily move to a point where we didn't need as many paper bulletins. Anyway. Well, Barbara, you're speaking to the choir because <laughs> Pam is... Pam is listening to all this. Yeah, I'm choir. <laughs> uh, I just want to one say one person we, choir. <laughs> we, we don't have the board anymore, and it wouldn't. There's no way to hang it in, in the present configuration of the church. I mean, You're it was kidding. Well, mm -hmm. the thing that held it, you know, was also taken down. I have no mm -hmm. idea where it is. I mean, the board slid in and out of a thing. Mm -hmm. and, um, so if we're going to do, I mean, we'll just need to recreate it. I mean, we need, if, if you want to do that, it seems to me if we're going to have, couldn't we, okay. If we're going to have a screen that shows the Zoom participants, the hymn numbers. No, no. I don't think so. No. No. At the Newman Center, they. I have an idea. I have an Newman, idea. They flash it on a. On yeah. something on the screen light it up <laughs> above right a lot of churches well, do that. would it 
would it take up more room on your bulletin if you just put the hymn numbers in a little box at the top of the page so people can just go boop 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 like recreate the board but I, i'm not quite version. i'm not quite sure the hymn numbers were in uh, patricia's yeah, yeah, anyway, if we didn't, if you didn't have a bulletin and the hymn, hymn numbers were on the wall, then it wouldn't matter. Well, that's, that's a very good suggestion. And, and um, uh, I would like to take that project on. I will be happy to find out whether or not we can Reading some uh, hymn boards. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm sure they have a, you know, this one was handmade by someone at St. Albans probably 50 years ago. Yeah. And it was, it would look extremely out of place in our new sanctuary. Yeah. So uh -huh. yeah. Need something that's a little more modern. Well, just, you know, looks yeah. more painted. Not, not so uh, rustic. <laughs> Uh -huh. yeah. or but you or said, in any case, you said we don't have it, Becky? I, I suppose we could look around. It might be in a storage room downstairs. Uh, it's not in the, we don't have it in the sacristy anymore. So um, maybe we could look it up in those catalogs of the things you can oh, buy. Oh, yeah, through. you can always order one. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, you know, also a lot of people, I don't know if this is a thing to talk about a coffee hour or vestry meeting, but several people were saying that they're not really into the common cup yet no, and no, would no. like the little service of the individual wine to continue uh, especially if we're mandated to wear masks what sense does it make to share our germs in the cup yeah no do, uh, i think the diocese says we can use the common cup but i prefer it does. i would prefer not to i haven't heard any it one. also makes i don't want to that said she didn't want to yeah, well, I think that's that's a decision for the vestry and the clergy. Yeah. Well, what, but we uh, could ask the group here. We well, could I think take you, a poll. It may be a decision for the vestry and the clergy, but you need to take into account. Absolutely. <laughs> the people, 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 people feel right it. because if if it means that people won't take communion because they're uncomfortable with the common cup, if that's the decision that's made, then people's that's desires need to be considered you know i don't know but um i do have one friend who went to a funeral this was pre-pandemic a non-church goer and was so horrified i mean you know there are lots of reasons to be made uneasy by things that one does <laughs> looking at the natives in their ritual practices mm -hmm. but was so horrified by the common cup what are you people doing yeah <laughs> Yeah, I've had well, you know, I, I, I'll just say a couple of things about that as, as, as someone who obviously has to be informed about this. Um, I actually have no problem with the, with this, with doing the, the, the small little shot glass things. If you want to do them that keep them by all means, you know, I want people to feel comfortable. Um, I will say that they do studies on, you know, common cup and, communicable disease transmission. Uh, in, 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 so our recommendations come from actual scientific studies, CDC oriented, and there really is very low to no transmission from the common cup. That is just the reality. So despite what people want to think in their, I'm telling you what science says. Right. I, I will also point out, and this is another thing that people do not get, when pe you know, we, we're not doing this currently, but intinction is actually more infectious than from the mouth because mm -hmm. your your germs are more on your hands than they are on your lips. Mm -hmm. And and so a lot of people think, oh, well, I'm just avoiding it when they intinct. And I'm like, no. And that, actually, I'm, I'm really a kind of against intinction personally, but <laughs> on a side note. Well, but... <laughs> We've talked about this before. Yeah, yeah. Really, people's little fingers dipping in the wine cup is much worse. Yeah, it just doesn't it really matter. But I, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think you could actually offer both, you know, if people want to do the common cup, then fine. If they don't, then we have the alternative. Alternatives are great. I think that, that might be a good compromise, you know. Yeah. I've also, I've run into people who were totally entranced by the idea of the common cup that 
Right. That was what one of the things that they thought was different and that they thought it was, they really liked it. So, I mean, there's, it's, there's opinions all over the map. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you know, we can use a, a, um, two, two limbs, one with the cup and one holding the tray and, uh, and people can choose. I think that's a good idea. Deborah also wants to go back to baking bread. Yes. Yeah, I was uh, thinking of that. Yes, yeah. I'm, that totally, great. I'm totally ready. <laughs> I have a recipe from the monastery. It's really nice. And um, the way the bread is, it's, it's scored in advance into little squares. So when it Ooh. comes time, you know, it, I can even make a smaller one for the fraction. I was going to say, yeah. And, you know, and then just have the bigger one. And then that's all scored. So whoever is acolyting, it's easy to break up into these lovely little squares. Nice. I was just going to share nice. it. If you're interested when it comes to bread baking, um, uh, St. John's gets this flour from uh, a place called Honor of Farms. In yeah, Maryland. I know. It. Okay. Yeah. And you know, it's a ministry started by a priest in the diocese of yes. ancient grains grown from Israel. Uh, yes. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, used her bread, I used her bread before, Elizabeth's Ruff's um, flour before. It's really expensive. So, um, I usually mix it in with um, another organic flour. <laughs> Common every day. <laughs> That's it. A little That's cheaper. <laughs> we do have a lifetime supply of these, of the little uh, wafers we are using. But that's all right. They they don't they last. They last forever. <laughs> they'll be they'll be here after we're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll, but they'll be um, you know there'll be times when we'll need them. So we'll right. Um, well, um, do you want to do it for the all so Saints All Souls? Yep. Service. Yes. Okay. Nice. Okay. Right. okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is great. We've had a parish. <laughs> We've had an all parish meeting. <laughs> today <laughs> that's great so yeah so when we set up then um we'll set up well, of course we do anyway set up the common cup and the tray but the priest can add an, a little extra wine to the chalice in case people want to do the common cup i know jim now just adds just enough for <laughs> for one for one quick oh, for himself. just um, yeah but we should ask him how he feels about it also I yes think. of course yeah Anyway, well, thanks everybody. And how is he, by the way? Do we, have we got Jim? Um, he has very few symptoms. He said he had a runny nose. Mm -hmm. and, and that's about, that's about it. And how, how long is it since, since he was, he thinks he was exposed? I mean, when did they well, get- Well, he doesn't, he doesn't know that. He tested positive twice yesterday. Did, uh, he, he normally tests before he goes to a service, mm -hmm. you know, and he tested once and then he double made sure. He's, he sounded fine on the phone. He was just very disappointed. Yeah. I know. I was, I, I was pleased to hear that Chuck was there. Yes. yes. Nice to see and, Chuck. And Howie Hickman. Howie was there too. Yeah. Oh, and Elizabeth. That's great. Well. We miss them both. Yeah, yeah. we do. <laughs> well, folks, um, I expect the vestry wants to get started. So, all right, have a good right, So, what did I do before, Pam? I, okay, so I, uh, I so, just leave, I leave the meeting, and the meeting continues. Is that right? And, and vestry will meet at what ten after eleven. Okay. Is there any chance that we can just? get going relatively early or um i sure people yeah, want to I, just go I'm, I'm, that's, let's that's go fine. compromised on the other end of things sure okay oh, thank you, you everybody okay, I'm gonna thanks to everybody so i'll leave the meeting and it will continue okay okay um do i need just to stay on no um go ahead and leave becky and it'll automatically make me the host all right just leave the meeting. Don't end. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna stay on. So that gives us. And I'm gonna stop recording now.